Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to do our first 2024-2025 winter look ahead. Now we are a good two months away from the start of meteorological winter so we're in prime position to start having a look at some of the long range data for December, January and February. Now over the coming weeks we'll have a look at a lot of different climate drivers but in today's video I thought we'd start on the classic ECMWF longer range charts and also have a look at what, it go, what is going on up in the stratosphere. Now over the past few years we have had good sort of record in terms of getting the trends correct in these videos. For the last couple of years we've been predicting colder patterns occurring uh, perhaps in 2022 it was in December and that's exactly what we saw. The only caveat we sometimes see is more of sometimes overdo the longevity of any cold spells, unsettled spells. Um, as I remember back in 2022, we had a very, very strong trends for a very cold December. We saw two weeks of very cold conditions in the first period, but towards Christmas, we saw nothing. It went mild, wet and windy. So that is one caveat that we're going to have to take into this year's forecasts. Any sort of major trends, we must remember that it could be an overwhelming week or two within the overall month. Uh, and of course, we'll use that to improve our forecast for this year. So do remember, if you enjoy the videos, which you like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, so for the first half of the video, we'll go through the latest ECMWF charts. We'll probably look at these in most of our updates, uh, especially ones that straddle the month because we get new data every month. And of course, nearer to the actual winter months, there'll be a lot more data available as we start to get into the ensemble range, which is 42 days. So probably late October, early November, we'll be able to start look, looking at December, uh, as that is really the actual month of most interest, because of course we have Christmas. So do you start on the mean sea level pressure charts here? This is the uh, data generated in September. And we can have a look at some of the probabilities for the three month period. So we've got our valid time on the left, which is October. That's the beginning of the forecast image we've got. But if you look in the top right, that this is this is actually for October, November and December. So it is very high level overview of the probability of the mean sea level pressure. Now, oranges, reds, that is going to be higher pressure. Blues is going to be lower pressure. And if we're looking for colder conditions through winter time, we're looking for blocking patterns, high pressure up towards Scandinavia, towards Greenland or Iceland. If we're looking for a wet to windy pattern, then we're looking for blues in those areas, Greenland, Iceland and Scandinavia, oranges further south with strong, strong flat westerly jet stream. And of course, as I said at the start of the video, if that is the trend for these three monthly periods, it doesn't mean it's definitely going to happen and there isn't going to be other sort of patterns within it but that's the overall trend we're seeing so for this october period october november december it is actually looking like a quite a flat westerly pattern high pressure nudging in at times which does mean there will be drier periods especially further southwards and maybe even late warm spells as well if we do drag up uh, drag up southwesterly winds but this would imply there's not any going to be any major cold spells through October or November like we have seen in the past couple of years. We have seen fairly front-loaded winters in the past few years. None of them have been majorly cold overall, but the colder spells, quite a few of them, have come in that first half of the period, especially late November through to December. Now, if you look at the next three monthly period, this is November, December, January, so properly getting into winter now, it's actually quite similar. You can notice towards Greenland, it's more of a neutral pattern. Again, that could be an indication that within this overall westerly trend, there could be some amplification of the jet stream. So it couldn't rule out some colder snaps. But if you're looking for anything massive, um, a major cold spell like December 2010, beasts from the east, anything like that, we would need to see a lot more blocking to our north than this is showing. If we move to the full uh, winter months here, December, January and February, unfortunately, if you're looking for cold weather, this is as mild as it gets. A flat westerly wind. You can see exactly where the dividing line is between low pressure, high pressure, and it's completely horizontal with the UK. Not much amplification going on um, from the looks of this. 
and then pretty strong blues towards northern Greenland. So looking like a very strong tropospheric polar vortex. So it could be quite a stormy, unsettled and mild pattern through January, February and March. This is the last extremities of this run. You can see the jet stream is shifting slightly further southwards, more blues towards the North Atlantic, which could imply more of a southerly tracking jet stream at times, but still with lots of oranges over Europe, it does look like it could be a fairly mild pattern indeed. So if you are looking for cold weather, unfortunately these means level pressure charts from the ECMWF for September do not look particularly good. Now I'll explain in the second half of the video why I think this is occurring within this model output. It looks like it could all be due to the early season stratospheric forecasts. Now if you go over to the temperature anomaly, again, we've just looked at the pressure charts, we're expecting this to be mild. And if we do run through it quickly, it is looking mild indeed. Now, of course, with the warming climate that we do have, we do have the, this is the anomaly compared to 1993 to 2016. So we are inevitably going to be going to be seeing more above average than below average. As you see this here, lots of reds appearing. I'd say anything that's kind of white or even blue, that is cold spells. Um, anything orange is around average. Anything red is above average um, for sort of the latest period up to sort of 2020. So if you look, you can see it's looking pretty mild indeed. A little bit cooler across Greenland, again, could be an implication of a stronger tropospheric polar vortex. Into the next period, November, December, January, looking pretty mild indeed. You can see again, just towards Greenland, the south of Greenland, slightly cooler. Again, could be indicative of cold air pushing out of the Arctic. Uh, and then for the full uh, winter period, again, look at that blues and whites across much of the North Atlantic towards Greenland and for parts of Western Northern Canada. Again, that would show a pretty strong implication of strong tropospheric polar vortex across uh, the Western Hemisphere towards Canada, Greenland, etc. Uh, and then again, that could fuel the jet stream quite significantly. And then the same for the period beyond that, even more blues appearing towards the North Atlantic, Greenland and Canada here so again that is a very strong indication of a very strong tropospheric polar vortex towards north america and greenland so yeah that is pretty extreme uh, and that is fairly strong signal signal at this stage for uh, perhaps a very westerly based pattern again could indicate some cold spells cold snaps coming for north america even though they'll generally have a westerly flow as well if they see any application of that jet stream with very cold air very close by, it can, can, can go very cold very quickly. We hear about all these polar fronts crossing the United States of America, and this is the sort of pattern that could allow that to happen. Now, the last sort of chart to look at from the East and the Rift is the precipitation charts. And again, we're expecting this to fall in fairly similar to those pressure charts. And you see for October, November, December, it does look fairly similar. Lots of greens towards the northern hemisphere. Again, that's expected with more low pressure, more of a westerly flow. Uh, again, these are anomalies. So we're not looking at absolute precipitation. Greens across the Arctic is not nothing compared to greens across the tropics or towards Europe. But it gives us a, a sense of where high pressure, low pressure is positioned, where we're likely to see the most precipitation. For the November period, again, broadly very similar. Lots of greens to our north. Again, not overwhelming towards Greenland, Iceland and over the UK. So I doubt it's going to be wet and windy all the time. There will be changes within there. But again, that's the overall trend from the runs this month. And then the same could be said for December, January and February. Lots of precipitation there just to the south of Greenland. So it could be uh, quite a big spawning area for deep lows that are potentially developing. And then finally for January, February, March, a very similar pattern again. Perhaps those greens dipping slightly further south to maybe of a more southerly tracking jet stream towards the new year. Again, that could allow cooler, colder patterns. But from the looks of these charts, it does look like the overall trend. If you look, we looked at no other data and no more data over the next few months, off the back of this, you'd probably say we're looking at a degree or two above average, and we are looking at above average precipitation as well. Now, I think the main reason for this is because of the early season stratospheric forecast. 
Now, if you go over to theweatheriscool.com, we've got our classic chart showing the different pressure levels and the wind speeds. And as expected, we're seeing westerly flow starting to develop high up in the atmosphere. Slowly more of these yellows are descending, and that is the stratospheric polar vortex starting to form. Now, this forecast is only for a couple of weeks, so this is only until sort of early October. So I'm not expecting to see any real impact from this on winter. But just wanted to show you, actually at the moment, with the anomaly chart on the right, we're looking at a weaker than average stratospheric polar vortex. So in itself, I'd say perhaps positive signs if you wanted a bit more blocking. This could give indications of a weak polar vortex the early parts of winter, as sometimes these trends can carry on for multiple months. But that is not what we're seeing yet. These in the next couple of weeks, if you go, go to the ECMWF longer range charts, this is for the next 42 days. This only gets into the middle of November. You can see perhaps why the models are showing a westerly based pattern for winter especially early winter but maybe even for the full winter uh, again just january february forecast is going to be nowhere near as accurate as the november december forecast at this range um again none of it could be accurate again there's so much uncertainty at play but i think this is why we're seeing this shift to an unsettled westerly mild pattern and it's because we've got a very weak polar vortex at the moment down towards that sort of 25 percent uh, percentile there that red line at the bottom below the thick red line but in the middle of october we shift average and then by the end of october early november we shift to well above average and potentially some runs going ridiculously above average and that is an indicator perhaps of a very strong polar vortex into early winter as well if it continues that trend of well above average wouldn't be surprised to see an exceptionally wet windy and mild pattern as we do see strong westerly flows throughout the northern hemisphere and again doesn't always it's not always a one-to-one -one correlation but more often than not it is now again this doesn't even take into account potentially stratospheric events stratospheric warmings things like that that can occur and that we've got no chance of forecasting at this time frame so i did just want to show you this just to emphasize where we're seeing these forecasts coming from these aren't the models just pumping out mild graphs for no reason they're doing this off the back most likely of this data there will be other things at play but of course the stratosphere is one of the main drivers we look at and it does give us very very strong indications of the source of patterns we're going to see not the day-to-day -day, but sort of the week-to-week -week, month -to month patterns and you can see here very strong through early to mid november so i'm not surprised we're seeing very strong westerly flow into december and perhaps beyond again we'll have to wait and see what the update are for next month uh, again we'll probably have another video out next week or the week after looking at that and again it's going to be those compare comparisons that are going to be the most important part because this could just be the models getting a little bit ahead of themselves or they could be picking up on a genuine trend. It is going to be one to watch over the coming weeks, but if you are looking forward to something cold, potentially wintry, the latest update is not looking particularly great. I have to be honest, I can't kind of sugarcoat this, but things do change. We'll wait for those trends in the next couple of weeks. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed to do stay tuned as we'll have some more updates out soon. And I'll see you again for another video soon.